Welcome to another edition of What Sold in the Past. At this point, 13 days, we're going to go over things uh, from lowest price to highest price. And I'm going to explain to you why I bought this, why I think it sold for what it sold for, and some tips you can use to uh, make some money. And at the end of the video, too, we're doing a giveaway. So uh, make sure you stay around for the whole thing. Okay, we're doing this in one take, one take only. First up is Sonic and Knuckles for the Sega Genesis. I sold this for $29.95. Now check comps on eBay, it's gonna be a lot lower than that. Even sales on Amazon are lower, but I know that I can hold out for a higher price because these sort of games, these legacy games, I guess you might call them, are going up in value. If I had the box complete with the manual, I think, I could have got closer to 50 bucks. Next up is another video game. It is for the Wii, again, a obsolete gaming system. Not as old as the Sega Genesis, but older than the Xbox One. Uh, the Nintendo Wii, this game was Kirby's Return to Dreamland. And I sold this for $31.97. Again, it is being shipped via FBA, meaning like I said, Amazon stores the item. They use their shipping supplies, they ship it, they, uh, they pay a very, very low rate, and that in turn is passed on to the customer. So uh, that's why I can sell these for more on Amazon than eBay. I would figure on eBay, this game is going for about 20, 25 bucks. Uh, on Amazon, I was not pricing this to get the most money I could. I probably got 34.95. I didn't, I just put it on my auto repricer, which always lowers the price to the buy box. And if I'm not the buy box, I lower by two cents, so I kind of, was pushing the price down a little bit, but I wanted to sell this game fast. It was just the disc, nothing special. So uh, out of that $31.97, I'm keeping probably 22 bucks, 25 bucks. When I buy these games in bulk, I'm paying a quarter game sometimes, so I wanna sell them as fast as I can. Uh, if I held out for four more bucks, sure I could have got it, but that might have ended up making less total revenue. You get 34 bucks one time, that's not as much as 34 bucks six times, or 20 bucks 15 times. Um, obviously, 20 bucks is too low, but you get what I'm saying about sometimes it makes more sense not to hold out for the highest price, especially if you have a easily replenishable supply. This is an eBay listing. I did not take this picture. It is far better than I could have ever taken. I am uh, consigning inventory with probably, well, I sent out 10 boxes. Three people have been doing good. The other seven, I don't think they're really that interested. But the people who I am working with routinely, uh, they are taking pictures and listing them on their own accounts, and then we split the profits. Uh, these sold for, with shipping, $36. They are specialized sport geometry body cycling shoes. They're shoes for riding bikes. If you wanna get faster, you lock them into the pedals, and you can go. I paid $5 for these, uh, and then after shipping and fees, if you were to list these by yourself, not do a consigning thing, you should probably expect to get about 30 bucks profit out of them. Th five bucks into 30 bucks, 25 in your pocket. Uh, the net profit that is, not gross profit. Um, I look out for them all the time. Specialize is a good bike brand. Bike shoes sell. And usually, because they are kind of a niche item, thrift stores don't know what they have on their hands. Sometimes uh, old cameras sell for absolutely nothing. They are worthless. And sometimes they are money, 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 money. This is an example of the latter. Canon PowerShot A2000 IS 10 megapixel, 10 megapixel. 10 megapixels is not that many, more than nine. But uh, the most uh, common number I think you would see on most cameras today is like probably 18 to like 25. And I'm not saying the big cameras, uh, you know, the DSLRs, I'm saying like a point and shoot little Canon camera is gonna be like 18 megapixels. So why someone buys uh, an obsolete camera, I do not know. I would assume it's because it's what they had before. Uh, this person, they are from a small town in Georgia and their name is just initials. Is that an old person? Probably, sounds like an old person. Uh, they. They might be just trying to replace a broken one or maybe they want a backup camera before these become impossible to get. I don't know. I sold it for 50 bucks. Well, 49.30, but I'm rounding up. Out of that 50 bucks, I can realistically expect to pay $9 in fees between shipping and you know Amazon fees. So I bet after the whole thing said and done, I made 35 bucks off this. I don't know how much I bought it for. I buy a lot of old cameras for between a dollar and four dollars, you know, whether they're at thrift stores or 
electronics recyclers or whoever it is I buy a lot of these and we just go through them and the ones that are broken beyond repair they get scrapped generally I can get about 15 cents per camera when I scrap them uh, that's just the, the metal inside it really isn't worth it I, sh I shouldn't even say I scrap them uh, we auction them off now what we used to do is scrap them. what we do now is we auction them off and get about yeah about a quarter a camera and someone scraps and then I think they must have a way of refining the metals on the inside or maybe they just reuse the parts I don't know uh, the point I'm trying to make is is that these old cameras while they do sell much more infrequently they are still worth a lot of money Lacoste loafers I bought these shoes for a dollar ninety nine at a thrift store they were not in as good condition as they are in the guy I sent them to he cleaned them up really really good and he got over 50 bucks for them. Uh, out of that 50 bucks you're probably gonna expect let's see I don't know 30 bucks profit uh, $30 profit to work with if you see these at a thrift store or at a garage sale they are very high quality loafers I would say they're when I say high quality I mean they're in good condition they're not like the best of the best but uh, in terms of how bad they could be for being used shoes there's no marks in the bottom really there's no tearing at the seams and uh, reading the description that he put down here he gave them a little bit of uh, conditioner leather butter on there which is a, a nice touch and if I would have sold these shoes I would have got probably 15 bucks for them but because he put the extra effort in uh, we got over 50 bucks more shoes I have uh, the chance to buy a lot of shoes around here not sneakers what happens in my area is there's uh, three or four guys who actually volunteer at thrift stores in the area and in return for their volunteering they get first dibs on all the shoes and those guys specialize in sneakers so I don't get a good chance at buying Jordans or whatever not really at least but what I do get a good shot at is dress shoes wingtips etc I don't know the most about them I have no clue this guy I'm working with knows a lot more about shoes than me but I do know if I can buy these shoes for five bucks a pair it's definitely gonna be profitable uh, the brand is Florsheim or Florsheim but I, I bet it's Florsheim uh, Royal Imperial Men's 12B Wingtip Derby Brogue Dress Shoes. Uh, wingtip and Brogue and Derby, those are all keywords for shoes. I believe he's using some sort of pricing mechanism, probably Terapeak, to figure out what keywords are the most profitable. And uh, that's why we're working together because I don't have time for that. I'm too busy doing Amazon stuff. And even if I did have time for that, I don't have the eye for detail to take such good pictures. My pictures are always a little lacking. If you follow me on Instagram, and my Instagram is at WBNoblock, you would have seen this when I bought it. I bought three mice at a thrift store for $2.99 a piece. Uh, the first two were kind of just like red herrings almost. Like they're not, I wanted you to think they were valuable, but they weren't. And I said, okay, what do these is the most valuable? And uh, inevitably, everyone who took the, uh, the quiz on my Instagram got it right. It was these, Rocat Rock 11-900 AM Knife. It's, uh, I believe, League of Legends is what this is for. It's for some computer game. Uh, the mouse cost 80 bucks, or I sold it for 80 bucks to a guy in Santa Paula, California. How is a computer mouse worth that much? Because it stores, uh, it's got memory in it. It does certain things a regular mouse like you see at your home wouldn't do. Um, it's a niche product for a niche audience. It took about three weeks to sell this, and the other two I have not sold yet. I'm only gonna get like 10 bucks a piece for those, probably even less, I'm just gonna auction them off. But this mouse, um, definitely look out for it. Look out for mice with weird contraptions on them, small little keyboards, extra buttons. Usually that means they have the ability to store some sort of command, and if they can do that, they're in a niche market, and if they're in a niche market, it means it's more likely that the item uh, has atypical value. They don't always have it, sometimes they're trash, but it's more likely. Well, we were trying for one take, but some dumbass called me, uh, and it stopped filming on my camera, so that is out the door. Anyways, remember guys, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. What I like to do is help you find new ways to make money. I just enjoy that. It's fun for me. I make money in weird ways. I'm not afraid of competition, so why not share the good word, huh? This next one is a Sony ICF-121. I sold it on Amazon in like new condition because it was like new. It was not new. It had been opened up and examined by whoever probably got it at the thrift store. I don't know. They ruined my chance at probably 50 bucks more. But uh, still, 100 bucks for a clock radio is not bad at all. I paid, I think, $5 for this. It was about a month ago, so it's been listed, I'd say, for two and a half weeks. Um, you can't expect these to sell that quickly. I got kind of lucky. Usually, 
a high value obsolete electronic like this might take two months to sell obviously longer if it's after christmas earlier if it's in q4 and i know that q4 is after christmas if you go by year but like don't be a dumbass just listen to what i'm talking about and don't try and find ways you can insert yourself in the conversation anyways uh sony icf c121 the white version sometimes these get yellowed what you can do is just soak them in it's like a peroxide baking soda paste and that cleans them up i don't do that maybe i'll do a video on it who knows uh, but if you can buy these for under five dollars you can generally always turn a profit with the exception of the most recent sony clock radios which go for about 10 bucks used the final item is an item you are very familiar with if you watched the channel before, and uh, and well, I hope you would be because I've been doing this for a while. It is a VCR, the Panasonic PVV4521. That is not a particularly valuable model. I mean, most Panasonics, if they're Hi-Fi uh, VCRs or Sony Hi-Fi VCRs or Philips Hi-Fi VCRs or Bunai Hi-Fi VCRs, or really any Hi-Fi VCR is worth looking up the model number either on Amazon or eBay. You just check sold listings, see what they're going for. Usually, in a buy it now listing, you can get 60 bucks for a Hi-Fi VCR in good condition, and on Amazon, it's gonna range from you know 40 to 150 bucks more if you're looking at DVD VCR combos. This one sold for about $110, including tax. The guy to pay tax, he's in New York, and apparently they uh, are not done strangling the money out of uh out of people over there he paid yeah 100 bucks plus 837 tax so i guess like a 8.4 percent online sales tax i don't know and uh it got sent to him in well upstate new york um i buy these all the time i sell them all the time vcrs are definitely a bread and butter item and i would recommend you always look them up when you can because if it's a giant clunker, that's trash. But if it's a newer plastic body lightweight one, there's a good chance you're gonna make some money on there. Just trust me, look it up. That was the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, comment, like the video, share it with a friend, uh, perform a blood oath sacrifice, all the normal stuff. Really appreciate it and see you guys later. But what about the giveaway? And you're right, I almost forgot about it. What we're gonna do is it's a $25 Amazon gift card giveaway three ways to enter one thumbs up the video two leave a comment of your best flip you bought for under 25 dollars and three join the email list in the link below that's how i'm going to be announcing the winner and if you don't you know respond to the email how you get your money well your gift card in this case <laughs>